man never made it to the moon, the flag shouldn't have waved, and the NASA videos were actually filmed by Stanley Kubrick. But is there any truth in this? None at all. At least until proven otherwise. Welcome back to a new episode of Until Proven Otherwise, the series in which we analyze popular pseudoscience and conspiracy theories and look at what the scientific evidence actually is. So we can have a clearer understanding of the true state of affairs. To mark its 55th anniversary, I want to tell you the story of the first moon landing. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. That July 20th, 1969, with the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever set foot on the lunar surface. Shortly thereafter, however, many conspiracy theories denying the event began to circulate, which claimed that the photos, videos, and all documents produced by NASA were actually fakes, and that the images had even been filmed by Stanley Kubrick himself, the director who had directed 2001, a space odyssey the previous year. So I would say that the best way to clarify things is to go and see these images for ourselves. This is one of the most iconic photographs we have of the landing, in which we see Buzz Aldrin standing in front of the United States flag, which has just been planted on the lunar surface. A classic argument of moon landing skeptics is the fact that the flag appears to be moving. Admittedly, as the moon has no atmosphere, it means that no winds that can move the flag can actually form. It should be drooping, and yet it waves. So this is a fake image. It can't be real. It must have been taken in a studio. I wouldn't bet on it. But first of all, do you really think NASA could be clueless enough to make such a simple mistake? Keep in mind that the Apollo project involved around 400,000 people, including top scientists, technicians, and engineers. In short, some of the best minds of that generation. Is it possible that none of these people noticed such a glaring error? There's actually another explanation for it, and it's a very simple one. Let's take a closer look at this photo. If we look carefully, we see that there's a metal rod running along the top part of the flag. It's there to keep the flag unfurled. We're sure of this because we still have replicas of the flag today, so we can say with absolute certainty that this is why it stayed open. But you might also say to me, yes, but the flag shouldn't wave. We said there's no air on the moon, so there can't be any wind. I'll now show you a NASA video to help you understand. The movement is caused by the flag being planted in the ground. The vibrations make the flag move, and precisely because there's no atmosphere, there's basically no air resistance. So the oscillation continues much longer than it would on planet Earth, giving the impression that there's wind, even though that's actually not the case. Having clarified the flag issue, another suspicious aspect is the starless sky. We're on the moon. There's no atmosphere, as we said before, so the sky should be filled with stars, but instead, there's nothing. The darkness is total. So it means that NASA took the photo in a studio and, to avoid possible mistakes in replicating the night sky, chose to leave everything black. However, here too, science comes to our aid. The subjects in the photo are very brightly lit by the sun, so in that part of the moon, in fact, it's actually daytime. We're so used to associating a black sky with the night and stars, which is understandable, that it's hard for us to imagine that on the moon, as there's no atmosphere, the sky is always black, even during the day. So you can understand that it's impossible for a camera, however good it is, to capture the light coming from stars in a seam that's flooded in sunlight. To do so, you'd have to drastically overexpose the astronauts and the lunar surface, ruining the photo. It's one of the basic principles of photography. If you want to correctly expose a brightly lit subject, the exposure time needs to be short, and therefore there's no chance you'll be able to capture faint light sources like stars. Now, let's take a look at this other photo, which was taken by Neil Armstrong. Do you notice anything strange about it? You can see that the shadows aren't parallel to each other. Some people therefore say that this photo must have been taken in a studio with light sources close to the subjects. If the light came from the sun, the shadows would be parallel to each other, right? Well, no, actually they wouldn't, or at least not necessarily. When the sun is low on the horizon, even here on Earth, shadows converge, especially on uneven and undulating terrain like that of the moon. 
so it's all perfectly normal. In fact, if there were more than one light source, as would be the case in any studio worthy of respect, we'd see multiple shadows, and there's no sign of them in any of the photos taken on the moon. In short, moon landing skepticism, in many cases, can easily be explained away by science, so there's no need to blame things on conspiracies or things of that nature. Skepticism is, incidentally, also directed at events prior to the landing and casts doubt on the astronauts' actual journey to the moon. One of the most popular conspiracy theories has to do with the so-called Van Allen belts. These are actually two regions in the magnetic field around our planet where the magnetism traps high-energy charged particles coming from the sun. These trapped particles collide with each other and, in doing so, emit very high-energy radiation. Well, according to skeptics, the astronauts could never have crossed an area with so much radiation and survived. That's all true, but the very name Van Allen belts should make it clear that we're talking about belts of radiation, not spheres that extend in all directions around the Earth. In other words, it's possible to avoid the Van Allen belts for most of the journey. NASA, aware of the risks for both the astronauts and the electrical circuits, chose trajectories that completely avoided the first belt, which is the innermost one, and only partially crossed the outermost one. Sure, in those few minutes the astronauts were exposed to more radiation than normal, but it was only for a few minutes. The dose of radiation absorbed was therefore well below the safety threshold. To be more specific, we measure the dose of ionizing radiation absorbed with a unit called the gray, which indicates how much energy is absorbed per kilogram. With a dose of four grays, a person will almost certainly die within a month, and a dose of between 0.5 and one gray is considered radiation poisoning. The astronauts aboard the Apollo missions absorb doses of a few thousandths of a gray, which is roughly comparable to a CT scan, so not enough to cause any health problems. Aside from the various conspiracy theories, there are also plenty of legitimate questions that, more often than not, end up being exploited by conspiracy theorists. For example, a recurring and logical question is, why haven't we returned to the moon after the Apollo program? The answer is that the moon landing was part of the space race, so a chapter in the Cold War, a chapter, don't get me wrong. That was incredibly expensive and also risky in terms of human lives. But once the goal was reached, the huge costs and the risks involved could no longer be justified. NASA's budget drastically decreased, and therefore the funds were used for other, no less important objectives, such as the exploration of planets with robotic probes or the construction of the International Space Station. Anyway, you should know that a probe captured some amazing images of the landing sites of the various Apollo missions. You can actually see the landing modules and even the rover's tracks. And if anyone still needs convincing, you should know that NASA has made all the documents from all the Apollo missions public, both for the journeys themselves and for the activities carried out on the lunar surface. Everything. See? We've got reports, we've got tables, we've got images, we've got cross-sections, and we've even got audio recordings. In short, we've got all the material there is on the Apollo missions. And obviously, what I have here is not all the evidence. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of pages, maybe millions of pages, tens of thousands of photos, and hundreds of hours of audio, and there are no inconsistencies in the material. So, faking all this material would have been impossible, or at least probably more difficult than actually landing on the moon. Well guys, thanks for watching up to this point. I hope I've cleared up all your doubts, even though I know that there are obviously lots of other theories regarding the moon landing. If you know of any others that I haven't mentioned, write them in the comments and please keep a respectful tone towards everyone. I want to see a discussion that's healthy and interesting for everyone to read. I'll see you soon for another video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science.